I want to talk about Vivek. He admitted reality, which is he has zero path forward, um, and endorsed Trump. Not surprising. Uh, here's a little bit of what he said, Satu. As I've said since the beginning, there are two America First candidates in this race. And earlier tonight, I called Donald Trump to tell him that I congratulated him on his victory. And now going forward, he will have my full endorsement for the presidency. And I think we're going to do the right thing for this country. So he'll sound exactly the same tomorrow as he sounded yesterday in talking about Donald Trump, except for that last final closing message of, if you really like him, you should vote for me. I have to say, um, that's obviously the right course. He did not have a path forward in this nomination. But man, this has been a very fruitful and consequential run for him. Uh, his name recognition has gone way up. His social media presence and following has gone way up. And he's created a lane within the Republican Party. It's like a sliver within MAGA that really loves him and that sees him as the next generation Trump. So I really think he might be like the Tim Scott message of not no, but not now kind of candidate. What do you guys think? Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I think that that he 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 does have a lane. I think Haley has a lane. I think DeSantis has a lane. Donald Trump is almost certainly going to be the nominee, whether he wins the general election or loses, though, there's going to be a Republican Party after Donald Trump. And 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 that's a lot of what this race is about. So for Nick, for Nikki Haley, for example, if Nikki Haley were to just stick around and be getting 20, 25 percent, you know, here and there and was obviously the second place candidate in the 2024 GOP nomination, that's very good for the more hawkish people who want to give money to Ukraine, who are the, the, the staunch allies of Israel, people like that. Uh, Vivek obviously wants to throw Israel under the bus, wants to throw Ukraine under the bus. And there is a there's a, a part of the, the GOP electorate that's on board with that. So I think underneath Trump, watching all of this stuff play out um, is very interesting. And I, I, I think that more than potentially winning the nomination is why you would see somebody like Haley stay in this race, get a major keynote speech at the convention and try to keep the the, the neocon fire lit at least a little bit inside of the, the party. And not for nothing, most Republican elected officials in Congress are a lot closer to Nikki Haley than they are to Vivek Ramaswamy. I mean, that's right. Lot. That's right. And even that, that they are to Trump. And Vivek's not a carbon copy of Trump. I mean, I've said all, uh, repeatedly, I think Vivek is trying to be a carbon copy of Tucker. I really fully believe he is. he watches Tucker and tries to say what Tucker says. Tucker's one of the most clever and gifted communicators that, that we have on the right side of the country. And Vivek is not somebody who's been in Republican politics at all. I, you know, I, I don't even think he was voting Republican or voting at all for most of his adult life. And it's like, we watched him enter the race. He was not woke. He made that his thing. So, okay. But he wasn't saying anything that was pro-Trump or pro-MAGA as, as recently as a couple of years ago. And then I really believe strongly he stumbled onto the Tucker message, listened to it, converted it, tried to make it his own. And for me personally, it's why he doesn't sound as persuasive as Tucker does, because it's not in his heart. He learned it and is repeating it, but it isn't his. It, like with Tucker, it's sincere. I know the guy. I know Vivek some too. So he's got some learning to do. He's got some committing it to heart, some like, I think, in order to really sell it as a politician. Because I think voters at some level, they know if you are if you mean it or if you're just parroting it. Uh, and I would say, if I were advising Vivek, that's your next step. You got, need to do more than learn it. You actually have to love it and live it and figure out how these guys who are a little older and a little wiser and have been doing it longer than you have got to where they got, right? Like what drove Tucker there? What as a guy who's who was the, more National Review, bow tie wearing Republican for most of his life. Tucker got there organically. That's the only way to really truly land there, Stu. Uh, so I do think Vivek has a future in politics if he wants it, but I would say he's got some work to do. Yeah, I think that's that's a really fair analysis. I, I think he, he does sometimes sound like he's speaking these things as, as his second language, um, though he is a talented communicator and a smart guy. I think he's learned a lot of these points really well. You can tell some of the books that he's read uh, and in, ingested and, you know, people kind of make fun of him as that chat GPT sort of candidate. But like you kind of get that from him where he has ingested a lot of material and he is really well spoken and has something to offer to conservative politics, especially if the if the Republican Party is going to be a MAGA party post Trump. 
Um, I, I don't think that's a, I, you know, look, you look at this as a Vivek Ramaswamy uh, campaign worker or maybe him himself. You have to look at this as a positive, right? I mean, you, no one really knew who you were. He wrote a couple of books about wokeness that were really good. And he had, you know, he had something to say before this, but no one knew who the guy was. He was, you know, invisible on the screen, on the scene. I kind of think of him, and this, a lot of people take this as a knock, but I don't mean it as a knock. I kind of think of him as the Pete Buttigieg of this campaign. We're like, look, Buttigieg kind of came out of nowhere. No one knew who he was. He had a little bit of a moment there where it seemed like, yeah, he was making a little bit of damage. He, is he the young up and coming candidate? And then he winds up in some job inside the administration. It sort of feels like that might be the path for Ramaswamy. He has been oh undyingly God. loyal uh, to Donald Trump. I know, Trump. but like, to, to compare him to Pete Buttigieg is such an insult to poor Vivek. Oh, and he, Vivek, he as you know, is brilliant. He's so much smarter than that moron and tougher and Agreed. just more clever and capable and has made a gazillion dollars in the private sector, whereas Mayor Pete did absolutely nothing other than run a small town. Uh, I just, I get it. I, what you're saying is young whippersnapper whose name we didn't know. And then after mm -hmm. his presidential run, we did. But just, I'm sure you feel as I do about the intellectual comparison not holding up between those two well, men. We have no idea how Vivek Ramaswamy would uh, handle potholes in a small town. And no, it's true, we do true, know we that Pete can handle it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, <laughs> one point on each side, I think, Megan. I'm going to go ahead and say Vivek would not go on a two-month paternity leave either. But, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll <laughs> We'll see. Um, his wife is still young. They could st still have more children. Time may tell. Uh, so Vivek will go on to become a powerful surrogate, I think, Dave, for probably Trump when Trump seals this thing up. And that'll give MAGA the chance to fall in love with him all over again when there's not like that natural divider between him and Trump in the end and the messaging and all that. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure about whether any of these candidates will actually be well positioned to run in 2028. You know, if Trump, let's say Trump wins, best case scenario for Republicans, who will be the favorites to run? It's usually somebody who is like then a rising star, right? It's like DeSantis won't be in office anymore. Nikki Haley won't be in office anymore unless they accept a Trump cabinet post, which I mean, unless it's like an important cabinet post, it's not, not like secretary of transportation or HUD usually springboards you into the presidency. VP, that's another thing, but I don't think Trump's gonna make any of these people his VP, do you? I don't know. Um, I, I, the only one I think that he might is Haley. Um, and oh my God, not, I think she's the least likely. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not predicting that. Um, you know, people that I've talked to have have suggested that this is on the table. I think you saw. You know, Nikki a, a Haley's people. No, I mean you saw. I think it was Jason Miller yesterday who was asked about Ramaswamy and had a hard no. He won't be the VP. He was asked about Haley and did not have a hard no. True or false? Using your tax refund to pay off credit card debt is smart. False. Well, donewithdebt.com published a strategy designed to let you keep your hard-earned tax refund and reduce or eliminate credit card debt. Most Americans owe thousands in credit card debt that will take years to pay off, if at all. Done with debt found that filing bankruptcy is usually not the answer and taking out loans to pay off credit cards usually increases debt. When you engage Done With Debt, their legal experts and skilled negotiators will take on the credit card companies for you. Their winning strategies are designed with one goal, solve your debt situation quickly and permanently. First things first, chat with a Done With Debt strategist and explore your possible solutions. That Just that will make you feel better. Some debt fighting strategies though are time sensitive, so you do need to move quickly. Call right away. Check it out now. For a free consultation, visit done, D-O-N-E, with debt, D-E-B-T, dot com. Done with debt dot com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.